Homo sapiens! Welcome to another video. Today, we'll be talking about cancer stem cells. Cancer is sadly something all of us are aware of and have been affected by in one way or another. We in medical science are well cancer is one of the most deadly and elusive enemies ever faced by man. And here's what's been happening too often. Cancer. cancer stem cells offer a different way of approaching cancer and cancer treatment and is a topic I think everyone should know at least a bit about. Before we jump into our main focus though, let's briefly establish some important to know concepts about cancer in general. If you're already well acquainted with this topic, feel free to skip to this time or skip to the section titled What are stem cells? Put most simply, quote, cancer is a disease in which some of the body's cells grow uncontrollably and spread to other parts of the body, unquote, according to the National Cancer Institute. This impairs normal bodily functions. Another important term, tumors, which are masses of tissue. Tumors can be benign or cancerous, or also called malignant, with benign tumors not spreading to other parts of the body and cancerous ones doing so in a process called metastasis. This metastasis is usually what is of most concern because estimates say that about 90% of cancer deaths are due to metastasis. Finally, something that makes treating cancer difficult is the heterogeneity of tumors. It was initially thought that all of the cells within a tumor were similar, but we now know that there can be some pretty big differences between the cells in some cancer types. Why is this important? If tumors were perfectly homogeneous, one treatment would eradicate the tumor and possibly cure the patient. But having cells that act differently within the same tumor makes treatment much more tricky. All of that naturally leads us to the question, what is responsible for cancer and metastasis and how do we stop it? There are many differing theories that try to explain how cancer begins and progresses, but today we'll be focusing on the one in the video title, the cancer stem cell theory. If you're interested in learning about some others, I highly recommend reading this really interesting paper. Now, First things first, what is a stem cell? At the most basic level, stem cells must fulfill two criteria. They can self-renew indefinitely under the right conditions and can turn into many other cell types, like nerve or liver cells. To go more in depth into what stem cells are, feel free to check out my video on the topic right over there. In the adult body, we have a subtype of stem cells called adult stem cells which can only turn into cell types within their own tissue. An example of these are blood or hematopoietic stem cells, which can turn into white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. So how does all of this relate to cancer? To understand, let's take a trip back to 1994, when the first true evidence of cancer stem cells was discovered. This was done in a type of blood cancer called acute myeloid leukemia. Scientists began by analyzing cells from acute myeloid leukemia patients. They then used cell surface markers, which in this case acted like tiny different colored flags that helped scientists identify subpopulations of cells. The two main cell surface markers of concern were CD34 and CD38. Now I'll be saying CD34 and CD38 a lot in the next few sentences, but please bear with me, and we'll be using a very helpful model to help us understand all of this. CD34 is present on some bone marrow cells, such as certain stem cells. Also cells that had both CD34 and CD38 flags are more specialized than those that have CD34 but no CD38 flags. In other words, CD34 positive, CD38 negative cells are immature or stem cell like. Then using immunodeficient mice which have deliberately impaired immune systems, 
scientists transplanted cells with all different combinations of flags. The only mice that developed acute myeloid leukemia were those transplanted with CD34 positive, CD38 negative cells. So these cells, which remember, had some stem cell-like properties, unlike their counterparts, were the only ones able to initiate tumors. And just like that, the first cancer stem cells were discovered. Now, with much more research having been done, scientists have a pretty good idea of how cancer stem cells are involved in acute myeloid leukemia. To explain this, using a pyramid diagram is helpful. At the top, we have the cancer stem cells, which divide very quickly. These are the most rare, which is represented by the fact that they take up the least amount of space in the pyramid. Next are progenitor cells, which have limited self-renewing abilities and can only become a few cell types. These are more abundant and more specialized than the cancer stem cells. Finally, at the bottom, we have the largest population of cells, which are the most specialized or differentiated. But all of this applies to acute myeloid leukemia specifically. Let's take a look at another diagram that puts together some of the current knowledge about cancer stem cells to get a holistic view of their role in some cancer types. This diagram is adapted from a paper titled on the origin and destination of cancer stem cells, a conceptual evaluation. At first, there's a normal tissue with stem cells and differentiated cells in a niche, self-renewing as needed. Next, some sort of mutation occurs in an adult stem cell, marking the beginning of the growth of a benign tumor. As the stem cell divides uncontrollably, more and more cells with mutations are present and new mutations can accumulate, making the cancer now invasive. Next, certain interactions among cancer cells, immune cells, and other factors, which we won't get into in this video, result in mobile cancer stem cells, which can now cause metastasis. Now is a good time to discuss where cancer stem cells come from. After all, we started with the intent to answer what is responsible for cancer. To understand this, we'll jump back to our example of acute myeloid leukemia. Here we have two main diverging theories. The first says that the first cancer stem cell was originally a blood stem cell that, due to a mutation or multiple mutations, began dividing uncontrollably. In that case, it would be called the cancer stem cell of origin. This stem cell of origin would have given rise to the tumor at the very beginning of the cancer. On the other hand, it may be that a differentiated cell acquired mutations that made it stem cell-like. In that case, it would simply be a cancer stem cell. Here's another way to think about what cancer stem cell means. And now I'm going to quote from this book, Stem Cells, about what cancer stem cells are. So it says, the term cancer stem cell is taken to mean cancer cells present in cancer tissue that have changed their appearance such that they resemble and behave as stem cells. So as you can see, cancer stem cells were not necessarily adult stem cells to begin with. We now have a pretty good understanding of the specific cancer called acute myeloid leukemia. But there are a few caveats. First, not all cancers involve cancer stem cells. In those cases, another cancer theory is likely in play. But even in cancers where cancer stem cells do play a role in one way or another, there are sub-theories or models. The two we'll be talking about today are the hierarchical and environmental models, though they sometimes go by different names, and sometimes these models are working together. The hierarchical model suggests that there are intrinsically distinct populations of cells within the tumor. The cancer stem cells are the ones capable of dividing and giving rise to the specialized cells that can't divide. But the bulk of the tumor is made up of non-renewing specialized cells. In the environmental model, the environment is involved. Big surprise! 
Here, we can draw a parallel to how normal adult stem cells work. The environments in which adult stem cells reside, called niches, often have environmental signals telling the cells when to divide and differentiate. It is thought that, in some cancers, the niche plays a big role in how the cancer stem cells divide abnormally frequently. It's important to note that there are even more specific theories that have been proposed for specific cancer types. You may have begun to think of some new therapeutic opportunities for cancer based on what I just told you. Don't worry, we'll get to that very soon. For now, let's talk a bit about how truly widespread cancer stem cells are. What cancer types have they been discovered in? We've already talked about one, acute myeloid leukemia. Others include colon cancer, brain cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, and lung cancer. I want to talk about two of these cancer types so we can see the similarities and differences between how cancer stem cells play a role in different cancer types, specifically colon and brain cancer. Colon cancer begins with the formation of a tumor in the colon or large intestine. This tumor is called a polyp or adenoma. Adenomas begin as benign tumors, which can become cancerous over a long period of time. Though interestingly, it seems that the mutation that causes this change is often present from the beginning of the tumor formation. To better understand colon cancer and adenomas, let's take a trip to the intestine and explore one of the most well-studied adult stem cell populations, which can sometimes go awry and become cancer stem cells. We're now entering the intestine. As we zoom in, you begin to see structures standing up on the lining of the intestine. These are called villi, with the singular form being villus. Villi increase the surface area of the intestine, helping with absorption of nutrients. The cells that line the villi are shut away every few days, which means a lot of cell renewal happens here. Zooming in further still, we begin to see where these renewals happen, at the base of what is called the crypt. Here we have stem cells that are dividing. A certain signaling pathway, called the Wnt pathway, is telling these cells to divide and self-renew. Normally, a protein called adenomatous polyposis coli, or APC, ensures the Wnt signaling doesn't get out of hand so that when the stem cells divide, one of their daughter cells is a stem cell and the other becomes specialized or differentiated. These new cells eventually move out of the crypt, and when they do, they differentiate into more specialized cells that lie in the intestine. At the end of their lifespan, these differentiated cells reach the tips of the villi and undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death. This is when the cells are functioning as intended. When the protein APC isn't working as it should due to DNA mutations, stem cells can begin to divide into more stem cells with no differentiation, leading to a tumor. In this case, the stem cell of origin is the stem cell that had a faulty APC. All of this has been studied in mice, but likely due to mice's short lifespan, their adenomas don't turn into cancerous tumors. More research needs to be done in humans to better understand this whole process. Let's now discuss the role of cancer stem cells in brain cancer, but very briefly. The existence of cancer stem cells in this cancer type was first established in 2003 using cells from pediatric brain tumors. They found cells which had a cell surface marker remember, those are analogous to flags for our purposes, called CD133. Normal neural stem cells have this marker, but so do a minority of the cells found in the tumors examined. This minority, which was CD133 positive, was able to grow new tumors in the lab in a dish. A year later, in 2004, Scientists showed that as few as 100 of these CD133 positive cells could also cause tumors in immunodeficient mice, while CD133 negative ones could not. 
Having learned about all of this amazing biology, it's time to see how it may translate to real benefits for patients through new therapies. Let's start by talking about a treatment for acute promyelocytic leukemia, which is now part of its standard of care. This means this treatment has undergone safety trials and is being used in clinics today. Here's a bit of background. Leukemia cells in acute promyelocytic leukemia are called blasts. Blasts aren't able to mature into normal white blood cells as they should due to DNA mutations, and they contain proteins that, when released into the bloodstream, can cause excessive blood clotting. When chemotherapy alone is used, these proteins can be released into the bloodstream, something we want to avoid. To prevent or lessen that, all transretinoic acid, a form of vitamin A, can be used to make these blasts more mature or differentiate them. Then, when chemotherapy or another therapy is used to kill these blasts, it's done more safely. This doesn't work for every cancer type, unfortunately. Another avenue that's being pursued involves the environment or niche. In some environments, getting rid of cancer stem cells won't be enough due to something called plasticity. This is where cells that are already differentiated can acquire stem cell characteristics and become new cancer stem cells. For instance, progenitors can essentially become stem cells in the intestinal crypt when intestinal stem cells are removed. Likewise, researchers have found that ovarian cancer cells that were not initially cancer stem cells could become cancer stem cells when treated with cisplatin, a chemotherapy drug used to treat cancers like ovarian cancer. As I mentioned, in cases where the environment can essentially create new cancer stem cells, targeting just the cancer stem cells won't do because they will return again. In those cases, studying the signals and pathways that lead to the gaining of stemness and eliminating those while minimizing side effects may be the best choice. Further complicating things, cancer stem cells seem to be more resistant to chemotherapy. In fact, many current cancer therapies use standard chemo, which, due to the resistance of cancer stem cells to the treatment, may result in a higher proportion of cancer stem cells to differentiated cells that survive. Researchers are currently studying what causes this and how to make cancer stem cells more susceptible to chemo. I know all of this seems quite complicated. In fact, a quote I particularly liked from this review paper says that, quote, the more we learn, the more challenging it seems to outsmart cancer, unquote. That unfortunately seems to be true. But there are thousands of researchers and hundreds of therapies being pursued at this very moment that promise a brighter future for cancer treatment. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested, feel free to check out all of my references in the description box down below. I've also left some links there to donate to cancer and stem cell research. See you next time!